hello everyone a very good evening to all of you i welcome you all to this session uh, five key skills to kick start your career in artificial intelligence my name is rishabh kashyap and i'll be your host for this session today we all have heard about artificial intelligence being an in demand job domain getting a job in this domain as a fresher or switching as a working professional can be difficult in this session with our host mr lakshmi narayanan we will be discussing about the impact of artificial intelligence in the jobs of the future we will also discuss the skills that learners can acquire to start a career in artificial intelligence the session will be beneficial for both working professionals and recent graduates who are looking to build a career in this domain at the end of the session we would be concluding with a q and a for all your queries i would now like to welcome our host mr lakshmi narayanan ji uh, sir is the senior vice president and global delivery head at polestar solutions he is an experienced management consultant with an ex extensive experience in providing ai and analytics consulting to many fortune 500 companies over the last 15 years sir is also a management graduate from iim lucknow and a post graduate diploma in artificial intelligence and machine learning from triple it bangalore sir has been a faculty a visiting faculty at iim kolkata and iim lucknow engaged in teaching modern day tools and techniques to students now Without wasting much time, I'd like to hand over the dice to sir and sir, welcome to the session. Uh, you may take it and you can uh, tell the learners about all that you have with your experience. Thank you very much, uh, Rishabh and Vineet for uh, scheduling this discussion. Thank you very much. And I'm quickly sharing my screen so that uh, people can. I hope my screen is visible to you and the participants. Uh, yes, sir, it is. Perfect. Good. So let me quickly uh, take you across some of the key areas of AI and what kind of skills that you may need to kickstart your experience in the space of artificial intelligence. So good to connect with all of you. Thanks for spending your time on a Saturday evening with me to discuss this topic. Any queries, anytime, as Rishabh rightly pointed out, you can put it across in the chat and we'll continue to discuss. So I'll start with a basic question. That's something uh, which gives a good perspective to us. Business drives technology or technology drives business? What do you think? Because this is one question we always have in our mind. And this is one perspective that we should know. What is the role of technology in the space of business, in the space of corporate? That's something we should be aware of. And from that point of view, the answer to this question is important. So business drives technology or technology drives business. I would say it's business which drives technology. Even though the most popular answer here is, it's the technology drives business. Today, looking at Ola, Uber, Amazon kind of companies, the way they use technology, of course, it may look like uh, the technology is playing a big role in driving the business. But in reality, it is the business need which drives technology. I'm consciously sharing this perspective so that uh, you get to understand where technology plays a role in the world of problem solving, in the world of uh, corporate business problem. And also you need to understand the role of artificial intelligence in this whole domain. Why do I say that business drives technology? Let me start explaining this a bit more. Only when there is a need, only when there is a problem, we look for a solution, correct? And technology has always played the role of solving the problem in the corporate world, in the society, even in our personal lives. If there is a business need or without a business need, take for example, maybe your college canteen or anywhere nearby a tea shop, let's say for example, if you're a working professional, if you go and ask the college canteen owner whether he needs artificial intelligence or whether he needs cloud or augmented reality, most probably the answer would be, no, I may not need that. Or what is the need for it? Or what, 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 will, what kind of, I mean, how will this technology help me? That is a question that the person would have. Because he doesn't have a genuine need for this technology. Even if you're giving it for free to the concerned person, it's not going to help him out to a bigger extent. At the max, the canteen owner will say that, can you give me uh, maybe a Paytm 
or a UPA a barcode scanner. These are some of the technologies which they would like to adopt because that's the max need for them. Even if technology is available for free, you do not use that unless you feel the need for it. Another simple example for you to understand is, go to the Google Play Store. You will realize that uh, there are so many apps that are available in your mobile, in your app store. Still, you don't uh, download all the apps. You download when, when, there is, when there is a need for you to use the app, you download that particular app. This is what exactly I call it as a need driven or need drives technology. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. So without a business need, you don't adopt technology. Please have this perspective very clearly. And one important point that you should never forget is technology is there to solve problems that you face in the corporate world. Never miss this perspective. That's the first thing I would like to share as a view from the corporate world. Now, let me get to the role of AI. We understood the role of technology. Technology is for problem solving. Now, let's get to the world of what is AI. Can anyone help me understand the role of technology? Put it in the comments. I'm following all your comments. Tell me what is artificial intelligence according to you? Let's understand that first before I get to the skills that you may need. Artificial intelligence is the technology, a concept, I would say not even technology before even get to the concept of technology, I would say that artificial intelligence is a concept where we try to create intelligent machines. Anything that is available as intelligence in the humans, how can I replicate it and give it to a machine? That's what is the concept of artificial intelligence. When we say intelligence, we look at multiple perspectives. Intelligence means learning, reasoning, problem solving, linguistic intelligence, the language, how do we pick up language interactions, and perception. That is the five cognitive senses that the humans possess. If I'm able to give any one of these to a machine, I can call that machine as artificially intelligent. That is, I'm saying that it is not available with the machines, but I'm taking it, decoding how the humans have this intelligence, and I'm able to pick it up and give it to the machine. Thank you, Dineshwar and Arubhav for uh, sharing some perspectives, Rajat too. Human intelligence without emotions. Yes, today, by, by the way, do you think machines have emotions? Not really. Machines, but soon they will pick up emotions. Today, machines can express. If you have seen Sophia the robo, you will understand what is how machines can express. So here, what is the role of technology here? Why is AI a technology? Not really. That's what I was trying to say. AI is a concept of creating intelligent machines. Then what is the role of technology here? Why people say AI is a technology in many forums? AI is implemented with the help of computer science, that is the technology tools and platforms. We may have multiple perceptions about technology, but at the end of the day, AI, if you want to implement it, you can implement it only with the help of technology tools and concepts. That's the reason AI is popularly seen as a technological concept. And what is the role of AI? Connecting the dots with the previous slide, I would like to mention that AI also plays the role of problem solver in the corporate world. AI tries to solve certain problems which could not be solved in the normal conventional style in a new way, that is how intelligence can be used to solve the problems. So AI is helping you to create intelligent agents AI is helping you to create intelligent machines. And with the help of those intelligent machines, with the help of the intelligence that you have built in the machines, you are able to solve problems in the corporate world. So AI plays a role of problem solver in the corporate world. Depending on what kind of intelligence that you are giving to the machine, there are different forms of AI. Okay, so let's look at it this way. Areas explored in AI. I told you that there are five different dimensions of intelligence. 
the one that i was just explaining to you learning reasoning problem solving perception and linguistic intelligence now if you notice i am trying to decode any one of these intelligence aspects from the humans and i am trying to give it to a machine and this whole concept i call it as artificial intelligence now if i give the concept of learning if i decode it from the humans and give it to a machine i call that as machine learning that is i am trying to make the machine learn just like how the humans learn there is a question why this intelligence is called artificial because naturally the machines do not carry intelligence isn't it it's not naturally available with the machines so we are artificially giving in the intelligence to the machines that's why it's called as artificial intelligence anything that is not naturally available you are trying to give it to a machine that's why it's called as artificial intelligence as diksha rightly points out in the chat ai plays the role to solve the problems in a new way the new way is how to interpret intelligence from the data how to learn from the data and pick up new form of intelligence in fact i will tell you something i'm sure you'd have heard of this feature called as autopilot right the one uh, which air force you would have seen it in hollywood movies like air force one when it is attacked by a missile the complete uh, flight is maneuvered by autopilot autopilot is an intelligent system isn't it what do you think it is an intelligent system just that the intelligence is built in with the help of coding you directly code the business logic into the machine and you teach the machine how to fly an aeroplane the coding is done in the conventional style like if else business logic is built in and you are making the machine intelligent and this type of intelligence is available for the last few years isn't it right from 1980s late 1980s autopilot feature is there but the way it was created the way the intelligence was embedded into the machine it was slightly the conventional style like writing if else logic and that's what is called as an expert system autopilot is an expert system that is it carries the expertise of how to run an aeroplane how to maneuver an aeroplane that is the style that you are bringing it across and you are saying that with the help of that you are trying to showcase that that's what is the whole concept of expert systems which is also ai just that it is old form of ai so machine learning is one form decoding the machine decoding the learning aspects of human and giving it to a machine is machine learning natural language processing is how does the human decode the natural language when i speak even though i may speak english the way i pronounce and i speak english may be slightly different from the way you may be speaking but still you are able to understand my english you are able to decode the way i pronounce because you have the ability to decode the language and this is what is called as a natural language processing which is there in your brain your brain is able to decode it is there a way that i can take this power and give it to a machine i can do that all i need is linguistic techniques and other aspects which i need to put across decode give it to a machine and make the machine intelligent enough to pick up that new language as phoenix points out it's all about analyzing the data decoding the insights from the data and then putting it across in a system so that the machine is also able to decode the knowledge that is available in the text so extracting information from the text classifying whether the text is positive or negative sentiment that's also a good example of nlp speech speech to text and text to speech so that's also a form of intelligence what is speech to text and text to speech we humans have the ability to understand any language right when i speak you listen you hear and you're able to decode this is the power of cognitive senses your brain is able to decode it and this power if i am able to give it that's the speech an area that is explored under artificial intelligence 
So you have robotics, which is the common, the popular face of AI. The moment you make a humanoid bot, which has the ability to behave like a human, talk like a human, you call that as robotics. And finally, vision. Vision is nothing but the computer vision. If I'm able to decode the power of the human eye and the ability of the brain to process that images which are captured by the human eye and give it to a machine, I call that machine as computer vision. I call this concept as computer vision. Planning, scheduling, optimization is another important example, which popularly talks about how can you solve complex problems in the world of planning. So these are all the different areas of AI. I just wanted to give you this context because if you're new to the AI world, it is important you understand what is AI and what are the areas explored in AI before we start getting into the concept of the skills that are needed. I hope you have understood the concept of AI. If there is any question, you can always put it in your comments. Now let me talk about the skills that are needed for the AI world. Three skills broadly, looking at this Venn diagram. I'm going to talk about totally five skills, but three areas across which you need to develop your skills. One is domain expertise. The second one is max or statistics. The third one is a typical programming, computer science. These are the three skills or three areas across which you need to develop your skills. Now connect the dots, whatever that we were discussing. First, I was talking about the role of technology in the business world. That is the technology plays the role of understanding what the problem is and trying to solve the problem. That is an important role of technology. And I told you that if the problem needs an intelligent solution, you can bring in the power of artificial intelligence to solve that problem for you. That is where AI comes into picture. The role of AI in this world is to solve the problems in an intelligent way. Now, from this context, the first skill that you may need is business understanding. Any problem that you're picking up, I'm sure if you're aspiring to be an artificial intelligence professional, all, of, all the people in the world would have told you that at the end of the day, it's analytics that you're trying to solve. You're trying to look at the data. You're trying to decode what is there in the data with the help of advanced algorithms and basis those insights, you are trying to solve the problem. That's what everyone would have told you. That's absolutely right. So you start with the problem statement. What is the problem that you want to solve? If you don't have a good knowledge, if you don't have the ability to understand the business problem, it becomes a challenging part for you to be in the artificial intelligence space. I'll give you an example for you to understand this concept better from one of the projects that I executed long time back. The first project in the world of artificial intelligence is solving the attrition problem. That is trying to decode which employee will leave the organization next. This was the problem I solved in my very first project. To solve this problem, first of all, you should have an understanding of what attrition is. What causes people to leave? It changes from industry to industry, isn't it? In IT industry, there are certain reasons for people leaving the organization. In manufacturing, it can be a different reason. In banking, it can be a different reason. Every industry, the problem statement can be the same, but how, why, and what is the reason behind people doing something? The reason may be different. Are you able to decode or are you able to look at and understand the problem in a better way? That is the first step that you need to be aware of. Defining what is attrition, defining the root causes of attrition, taking the help of the subject matter expert and clearly understanding the problem is an important skill that you need to acquire if you want to establish your career in artificial intelligence. Because without knowing what the problem is, you cannot solve the problem. You can be a good artificial intelligence engineer, 
knowing everything else about python models and everything but unless you gain this business understanding unless you get a perspective of what problem you need to solve it is of no use of decoding the problem so this is something which is important for you the second important skill is problem solving i am sure you would have heard of this term right from the school college days that you need to have a very strong problem solving skill if you want to be an engineer if you want to be in the it world that is any problem that is given to you are you able to decode are you able to modularize it split them into small small components and then are you able to solve each one of them and then aggregate the result so critical problem solving skill is all about breaking the bigger problem into smaller problems and then dividing them and then defining them and then solving them this is a critical skill now take one more example maybe i'll take this example of autonomous car we all know that autonomous car is an example for artificial intelligence but tell me one thing what do you think autonomous car is solved by one solution not really even though it is a car the car has at least 30 40 ai projects running to make that car run in an autopilot mode imagine just visualize the whole autonomous car what do you think are the different ai projects which are making that autonomous car take one simple example how to simulate the human driving what i mean we are trying to understand how, what would a human decision be when there is a red signal in the traffic board we want the machine to take a similar decision just like a human would do while driving the car this is an important skill right and this is an ai project this is computer vision checking whether the signal is red or not yes computer vision and if it is red will i be able to solve uh, should i stop the car or should i press the accelerator what should i do should i press the brake or should i press the accelerator this is a machine learning problem correct now computer vision machine learning nlp all these things you are trying to bring it across to create one autonomous car now just imagine the moment i said autonomous car you know that it is ai but you need to split this into small small problems completely to visualize the business problem and to understand what kind of data would help you to solve the problem this perspective of dividing the problem into smaller components and then defining each and every problem very clearly understanding the problem very clearly and then solving it step by step is an important skill that you need to acquire so the first one is understanding the problem the second one is solving the problem with all the critical skills are you able to break down into components and solving it the example is autonomous car that we have discussed the third one is the ability to handle data this is where uh, analytics comes into picture you might have noticed the different areas that we are exploring in ai we are talking about machine learning computer vision natural language processing expert systems robotics everywhere it is about data data captured everywhere and everywhere you are trying to decode the data derive insights from it and then with those insights you are trying to take some decisions or solve some problems or initiate some actions so without data there is no ai so if you want to work on an ai project if you want to create an ai solution the important skill that you need to acquire is you need to know how to handle data like take the example of autonomous car i was just explaining to you i was telling you that autonomous car is multiple 30 40 ai projects coming together and then you are trying to solve it computer vision ai machine learning all those projects are coming in if you want the driverless car to be on road driving without any problems every second 
every sensor in the car has to capture the data and it has to continuously feed it to the machine learning algorithms. Now look at the volume of data that you're handling. You need to know, depending on the problem, you may be handling a structured data, unstructured data, sometimes semi-structured data also. How are you going to process all the data? How are you going to store the data? How are you going to prepare the data for model building? All these things require some set of skills related to data engineering and data visualization. Basically, you should know how to handle the data. As simple as learning SQL, structured query language to process the structured data, or learning query languages to handle unstructured data. No SQL, MySQL, there are different languages that are available. You need to pick them up to handle the data. So data storage and data management, definitely you need to do it. And some data engineering skills, like ETL, for example, extract, transform, load. How do you access data from multiple source systems, process them, manage them, so that you are able to get the clean data because in data processing, you need to handle outliers, you need to handle missing values. All these aspects are there. I don't know whether you have heard of this famous statement. In data science, when you want to get into an AI project, it's 80% data engineering. It's all about getting the right data ready for you to process and build a solution. Only 20% is about using Python, developing models, and trying to visualize it. 80% of the time, it is about handling the data, processing the data, and then playing around with the data. So without knowing certain analytical concepts, certain tools, you would not be successful in understanding the data or decoding the data. So please spend some time to learn new tools. Like for example, in ETL, you can pick up tools like Informatica, Talent, Azure Data Factory, such kind of tools you can focus on it. In visualization, you can pick up certain tools like for example, Power BI, Tableau, Spotfire. There are some of the tools that are available which you can pick it up. Because at the end of the day, even if you have the excellent model, unless you're able to showcase that model to the customer, the insights that you're getting from the model, unless you showcase it with the help of a jazzy report and dashboard, most probably the client may not even use the model. So you need to have the end-to-end -end vision, end-to-end -end understanding of how to implement an analytics solution for AI. For this, you need data handling skills. So Imran, I believe this question answers you. You are, uh, I mean, the answers is fitting your question. How data analysts help in AI? I hope that question is getting answered here. So this is the third important skill that you need to pick up. Now the fourth one is statistics. All of us don't play the role of statistics, right? Can anyone make a guess what is the role of statistics in the world of machine learning, in the world of artificial intelligence? What do you think is the role of statistics in the world of AI machine learning? Let's see whether you're able to guess this right. Put it in the live chat. I would be happy to check and respond. In the previous one, we understood that data handling skills are important. You got a perspective that it's all about deriving insights from the data. You use the different tools to handle the data. And once the data is ready, you need a mechanism to derive insights from it. This is where you have this concept of statistics coming into picture. You use different techniques, you use different algorithms, statistical algorithms to process the data, understand what kind of insights are there 
within the data, the hidden structures, the hidden relationships, the patterns that may exist in the data. As people are rightly pointing out in the chat, to analyze the data, to understand more about the data, to decode everything that is not visible to the human eye, I would need the power of statistics. In fact, as I was showing it to you earlier, I need both mathematics and statistical knowledge to process the data. Because one important thing is machine learning, artificial intelligence runs on the fundamental philosophy that everything in this world can be represented in the form of numbers. When you start representing everything in the form of numbers, that's when you can bring in the power of mathematics, power of statistics, and then decode or apply and understand the relationships that may be existing within the data sets. So statistics is an important concept that you should be aware of, and you should know what kind of algorithms are used for what purpose. When we speak about statistics, there are different algorithms, right? You have supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement learning approaches. Under each one of them, there are different statistical techniques, like regression techniques, linear regression, logistic regression, support vector machine, decision trees, random forest, clustering, you have k-means clustering, a priori algorithm. There are so many statistical algorithms that are available. So if you want to survive in the AI space, you should know how these algorithms work and how these algorithms can be applied in a certain context to derive the insights that you want. In fact, to summarize, you should know when to use what algorithm to derive insights. That's what I would call it as an important skill that you need to acquire in the world of statistics. So techniques and algorithms are important for you to pick it up. In fact, I always get uh, a very popular question uh, in this context. Sir, today people talk about data science, citizen data science as a concept, where in cloud, you can directly plug and play or drag and drop all these algorithms and you can create models. Is there a need that I need to pick up all these things, sir? Is there a real need? The simple answer to this question is, if you want to learn car driving, I would always say that start with a manual car, the manual gear, never go for the automatic one. First pick up the manual gear car, understand the nitty gritties of how the car works, enjoy the thrill of driving the car by shifting gears, and once you pick up everything, once you know how to drive the car, when to use which gear, then once you are comfortable with everything, then you can think about automated gear. That is for convenience. Which one is more efficient? You and me know very well. It's the mathematic, it's the manual gear car that is what is more efficient, isn't it, compared to an automated one? So that kind of knowledge, that kind of expertise, if you have to gain, you need to start by understanding the basics of statistics. You should know when to use what statistical algorithm to derive what kind of insights, to solve what kind of problems. This is one important perspective that you need to build over a period of time to solve the problems. But I know very well, as an engineer, generally we are scared of statistics, isn't it? Many a times we are good in programming, but we are not good in statistics. There is a fear, there is an hesitation. But I'll tell you honestly, today, there are so many websites that are available, so many programs that are available. In fact, even YouTube videos are available to help you to understand the statistics in a simple way please go through the content available in the online world. The programs, like what Great Learning offers, if you pick all those programs, they try to help you from the scratch to understand these algorithms. Go through this in a structured way, 
pick it up and this is where your real learning lies if ai is if we are machine learning is running on a model you are creating a model i would say statistics is the engine for it and you should know how the engine works if you want to be a great mechanic so statistics is something that you cannot ignore last but not least which one is the skill that you need to acquire as an engineer programming language is a skill that you cannot ignore isn't it you need to know how to use programming how to write good programs using different languages here i would say please focus on building a new skill like for example python r pick up any one of the skills by the way which one is more popular python or r ignore the image that you are seeing on the right but tell me one thing if you are picking up a new language which is the language that you need to pick up for understanding machine learning for building machine learning models you will pick up python so learn python from the scratch if not at least r but pick it up start learning the programming skills understand how the programs are written understand what libraries are available see there are two three things you should never ignore when you are picking up a new skill in a programming language one any programming language just like a usual language like uh, hindi english or any language it has a syntax and it has certain vocabularies or literature like libraries that are available so when you are learning python or r understand the syntax first understand what kind of libraries that exist when to use what kind of libraries start with basic programs like fibonacci series calculating the area of a triangle something like that slowly pick up larger complex ones and start applying all the machine learning concepts whatever the statistical algorithms you are picking it up try to apply it on the data set using this programming language using the libraries so first step is syntax second step is library the third step is practice continuously write programs take different data sets there are so many websites that are available like kaggle for example pick those data sets solve problems try to build your skills own your skills Imp get your ranking there are so many websites available which provides you a rank depending on how much coding skill that you have get into those environments try to pick up those skills do industry grade projects and hone your skills this is where you need to pick up that that skills that you gather are going to be applied again remember one thing there is a big difference between knowledge and skill we are talking about skill here knowledge is what you acquire from the courses from the online world from the learning platforms and other things that gives you knowledge unless you put that knowledge into practice and gain experience you cannot have a real skill so you need to focus on getting a skill from the whole knowledge that you have gathered from different places and you can convert knowledge to skill by doing more projects so please do more projects in this domain of python so that you are able to put across all these skills together and develop machine learning models so let me quickly summarize we have discussed multiple skills now we want i mean i started with what is ai let me quickly run through the slides again for you so we discussed about whether business drives technology or technology drives business we understood that it is the business which drives technology there should be a need for people to adopt technology so we started there so with the need comes the solution and solution comes in the form of technology whenever there is a complicated problem 
that should be solved with an intelligent solution, you make use of AI. So the role of AI in the business world is to solve complex business problems, which needs intelligent solutioning. So AI is about providing that intelligent solutioning. So intelligence comes in different forms. That's where the areas explored in AI come into picture, machine learning, NLP, speech, expert systems, planning, scheduling, and optimization, robotics, and vision. These are all the different areas explored in AI. If you want to get into the AI space, you can become an expert in one of these areas. Machine learning is the most popular one. Somebody was asking like, which is the hot field in AI? I would say machine learning is the one which can get you a job in both product as well as the services world. Computer vision NLP is also an area that is picking up, but it's more on the product side with very few uh, uh, opportunities on the services side that we can see. With that, we discussed about five different skills that you may need to be successful in this AI world. So let me come back to this slide and explain to you. You need domain expertise, that is understanding of the business problem is something that you should have. Once you get that, the second important skill is problem solving. How do you convert a bigger problem into smaller problems and find solution for each and every problem? That is the second important aspect. The third important aspect is you need to focus on data analysis, handling data, skills related to data engineering, data visualization, you need to pick it up. Only then you'll be able to analyze the data in a better way. So if you get the domain expertise and if you have the mathematical and statistical knowledge, you become a good data analyst. You can analyze the data with the techniques that are available. That's why the fourth important skill is statistics. How can you apply techniques? How can you apply techniques like correlation, causation, and different aspects, and also the algorithms like linear regression, logistic regression kind of algorithms on the data set so that you can solve a problem? So statistics is an important skill that you need to acquire. And finally, the programming language. If you notice in this image, with this image, I can explain to you that computer science is a need. It provides a platform for the mathematical models and the statistical algorithms to be applied on the data, which is representing the business. Only when you bring the combination of these three areas, domain expertise, mathematical and statistical models and computer science together, you can become a good data scientist, which is one of the hottest jobs in the world of AI. If you want to solve the real world problems in the world of AI, you need the combination of all these skills for you to be successful in this world of AI and machine learning. So five skills we discussed, focus on these five skills to kickstart your career in artificial intelligence. With that, I would like to complete this section and let's move on to questions and we will discuss more. Whatever questions that you may have in your mind, please put it across in the chat. We will discuss them one by one. We have 15 more minutes in this session. We'll discuss each one of the questions in detail. So Rajat is asking a question. How can a working professional in a service-based company switch to AI? Good question, Rajat. Two, three things I'll quickly mention. One, if you're serious about shifting to AI, do a proper structured program like what great learning offers. Try to do a complete program on data science and artificial intelligence so that you learn all the concepts which are relevant for you to switch your career. The program will give you knowledge. Post that, as I was explaining to you, you have to convert the knowledge to a skill by doing projects. Do projects. There are some industry grade projects which you will do as part of the program, that is on one side. You try to do more projects, go for to a startup, check with them whether they have any projects that you can do. Try to solve a real world problem with the help of data or go to websites like Kaggle, download data sets. There are so many data sets that are available like analyzing Netflix data and other things. Check them, download them, 
play around with them and explore that that is something you can always work out use all these things to build your profile the moment you convert knowledge to skill and you're able to build a strong profile it is easier for you to shift to the ai world i always say just don't stop with only doing a course and expect a magic to happen in your life course is just the first step build your profile around it with all the projects and other aspects that will make it easier for you so dineshwar is asking can we use other languages you can use dineshwar but uh, considering the recent growth of python with so many libraries contribution by the open source communities with advanced machine learning models coming through in the form of libraries i would recommend go for python though it is available still i would say that even though many platforms can provide you solutions many languages can provide you solutions the one that is extensively used in the market is python so look for that okay there is a question from madani what is the first project that should start with in the machine learning and ai world a very popular one i would say go for the titanic problem just search for titanic dataset logistic regression you can apply all the five skills that i spoke about you can apply those skills in doing that project all the five skills will be covered learn python and apply it you will be able to understand that madani okay arish has a question which area of artificial intelligence has high demand right now for jobs in order of sequence as i was telling you while making the presentation machine learning is the one which has enormous number of jobs in the market today because it's used both in the product and the services world then comes computer vision then comes nlp good so ravindra has a question more more ai is implemented in daily life that will definitely affect the job market in india yes ravindra i'll put it this way uh, ai is not going to take away jobs ai is going to give you more jobs remember in 90s when computers came up there was a fear that people will lose jobs because mechanization is happening or computers are going to take away the jobs but today if you notice actually the software world is giving more jobs to the market than any other industry same way ai is a concept humans and ai are coming together to solve the problems which have been which could not be solved for a long time by bringing ai we are only improving the quality of the kind of jobs that humans would do so it is not ai versus humans it's ai and humans against the problem solving with more and more problems getting solved it only increases the jobs in the market for us the point is are you picking up the right skills to attack the job market that is in your hands so focus on that ravindra so katendra has a question how many months or years it takes to become a data scientist if one starts from the scratch it's a very very subjective question but i'll put it this way on an average if you spend one good year doing a good structured program like the one that you can see on the chat from great learning while doing that program if you're able to do at least four or five projects which can demonstrate your expertise or understanding of ai machine learning using python if you do all these things and build your profile within a year you can make a transition to a data scientist role i hope that answers your question katendra can you suggest some projects and internships uh, viba yes i was speaking about uh, the machine learning project that is i was talking about titanic dataset you can also look at netflix dataset which is another popular one that is available there are some computer vision extreme images that you can scan and do computer vision projects open cv libraries projects are available just visit kaggle you will get that or if you do a program obviously you'll have a lot of uh, industry grade projects as part of it maybe that's a good beginning for you internships you need to hunt with the startups use uh, social media platforms like linkedin effectively to connect with a lot of people uh, especially in the startup world pick up a real problem once you pick up the skills once you have the confidence that you can solve the problems then go for the internship to gain experience 
because without knowledge you cannot find internships you have to show, demonstrate huge knowledge with good number of academic projects to showcase that you are ready you can do something more and that's where the companies will be interested to give you internships please focus on that vima so diksha is asking a question how can we increase our practice and knowledge i believe we have answered it it's through projects and the internships the same answer whatever i have given to viba you can practice at disha diksha so olakunle has a question apart from using python which other programming languages as savindra has pointed out you can use r that's definitely a good platform for you to begin with you can use r there but if you're learning for the first time any tool is new to you then pick up python i would always recommend that good do you have any other questions i believe i have answered all the questions that have come up anything else you would like to ask great awesome so i think we've come up to the end of the session uh, thank you sir for your valuable insights it was a pleasure to have you on our channel i hope the information shared in this session will help our learners along with this i'd also like to bring to the notice of our learners about the pg course which great lakes has in collaboration with university of texas at austin uh, to know more about the course of course you can click in the on the link in the chat box or you can also check out the same link in the description box for more such sessions subscribe to our youtube channel if you enjoyed this session do share it with your friends and also like this video so that we can be motivated and we'll be doing more such sessions in the future thank you everyone uh, see you soon thank you everyone all the best for your career take care stay safe thank you